Okay, in this video we're going to talk a little bit about the final equation, named equation in this chapter, which is Laplace's equation. So our physical representation is that u of x, y is temperature again, just like the heat equation, of a particular point on a rectangular plate. So unlike the heat equation and the wave equations that we were writing as u of x, t, so our two variables were x and t. Now we're using x and y because we're talking about two-dimensional surface. We're not interested in time. We're just interested in the temperature on a particular plate. Okay, so what our boundary conditions might look like, same as what they looked like before. Could be uh, plugging in a zero or a number for, uh, for one of the variables. It could look like the derivative at a particular place being zero or a particular function. Let's go through and think about what each of these means. So the first one means we're holding y equals zero. So let's see, y equals zero would be height zero. That means we're looking at the bottom. And if u of x zero, the, the u at y equals zero, it's just always gonna be u of zero. That means that the bottom is a constant temperature. Uh, let's see, if u of x l is u1, that means we're plugging in y is equal to l. And so y equals l presumably would be the, the top of the rectangle. So I guess this is the top is a constant temperature. Uh, this last one, the derivative of u with respect to x, so that's the rate of change in the x direction. Uh, at x equals zero, that would mean on this left-hand side is equal to zero, which means that on the left-hand side, the temperature is not moving left to right. So I guess that means that the left side is insulated. So if our derivative is zero to place, that means it's insulated. If the function is a constant, that means that it's being held at a constant temperature. Okay, um, unlike the heat equation and the wave equation, I'm not gonna make you sit through a, uh, an endless chain of videos of me trying to solve a differential equation. Um, it's gonna be the exact same steps. You solve a separable PDE, you split a function of u of x, y into two, you solve for the lambda, you combine your eigenfunctions, you solve for your constants. It seems like maybe it would be helpful if somewhere on this piece of paper I actually had a differential equation written down. Maybe let's do that. Uh, so our differential equation is second derivative of u with respect to x plus second derivative of u with respect to y is equal to zero. That's really important. Otherwise, how the heck are we supposed to get started? Okay, so our Laplace's equation, so-called because it's also the Laplacian of u um, is this equation. In order to solve it, it's just another differential equation with derivatives of u. We write u as a product. This time it's capital X times capital Y instead of capital T. We're gonna have to solve for capital X and capital Y separately. Uh, so separate the constants. Once we do that, we're gonna have to do a Sturm-Louisville problem on whichever one we have the best eigenvalues for. In the previous problems, it was always x, but depending on your boundary conditions, it might end up being easier to solve the y's first, but it's not a hard and fast rule. Uh, once we do that, we so once we find lambda, we plug lambda into the other equation. So we'll have a d and x and y. We solve one, plug our lambda into the other one. When we're done with that, we're gonna try and combine our eigenfunctions, which just means multiplying x times y and then adding them all up, taking an infinite sum. When we're done with that, we'll have a bunch of constants, c1s and c2s and all that nonsense. We'll have to solve for the constants. Typically, that ends up being a Fourier series. So the steps are all the same. The only thing that's gonna be different, the differential equation is very slightly different than heat and wave. Um, and it's got x and y instead of x and t. Otherwise, more of the same.